Welcome to my channel where we discuss everything and all things politics, economy, and development in Nigeria and around the world. Nigeria is a country where the unusual always happens. What is the former governor of Kogi State, Alaji Ayabelo, what is he running away from? As a former governor who succeeded in putting his own stooge as his successor, he should be, you would think that he will be comfortable to defend his tenure and having a stooge as his successor, that that one will also protect him. So, that, which makes one to wonder, what is the governor running away from and all this drama? Besides, he, he's, he has the necessary resources to be able to defend himself with enough senior advocates of Nigeria ready to offer service for him. So what is all this drama for? What is all this drama of trying to, of dodging, of escaping from EFCC, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission? What is it all about? And does the former governor think that EFCC cannot be able to reach him? They cannot be able to get him, if truly they are determined to get him. Why is why why all this drama? And why is even the EFCC issuing a statement warning members of the public about the obstruction of their officers in the course of their duty? Which, although they did not say it, many people interpreted it to mean. Uh, the kind of obstruction they got in having access to Yaya Bello. But from the information we are getting, or we read in the papers, it wasn't the public that obstructed uh, the EFCC from having access to Yaya Bello. It is believed that it was the police that were attached to the uh, governor. That's what is alleged. So it's not the ordinary person, ordinary man on the street, of uh, on the uh, in the street that can have the courage to stop EFCC from doing their duty. That that what should be of concern is to EFCC is how do they harmonize with the Nigerian police and other security agencies in carrying out this kind of assignment? Because to come to think of it, many of the people in EFCC, as investigative officers and what have you, they were they are policemen. They are policemen. So what is what 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 is the essence of that statement? That statement is supposed to be directed to their fellow security officers who are protecting governors warning them that they should not obstruct EFCC when they are doing their job or to aid and abate uh, uh, the escape of somebody that EFCC is looking for to escape. That should be the, the, the message and not the ordinary people. Ordinary people hardly uh, uh, obstruct the FCC from doing their job. That's my own take on this matter. But the, 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 the issue at stake is, can Yaya Bello continue to run from the EFCC when all that he needed is to go and visit them 
I accept their invitation. Go there with his lawyers. Whatever they are investigating against him, whatever petition they have, he will listen to them. His lawyers will listen to them. Uh, they may decide to keep him in their custody for a few days. And this is normal. Because if you present yourself to be a public servant, you should know that a day like now could come when you will be called upon to give account of what you did in office. We understand that one of the reasons governors like to put their successors was to avoid a situation where they will have to become, where they will become the guest of the EFCC. Because governors, outgoing governors, believe that if they can put their successor, that their back is covered, that nobody will disturb them, they will be in their retirement in peace, or they will go to the Senate and uh, be doing whatever they have to do there, knowing that the state they left is in good hand, quote unquote. But we have also seen that even those who planted their stooge are not finding it easy. They are not finding it easy. We know what happened between Kwan Kwasu and Ganduje. We know what is happening now between Obasani and, uh, and uh, Malam Erofai. And the list goes on and on. But our leaders seem to think that if they do all these things, that if they put their stooge, that they cannot be invited. You can be invited. The important thing is for you to know that when you are invited, you present yourself. But many former governors have been invited by EFCC. It's a fact. So I don't know what uh, Yaya Bello is scared of. He's not supposed to be scared of EFCC. It is for him, for them to present the evidence they have against him. He presents his own defense. And they will go to court and battle it out. And avoid all this drama. Because the way I look at it, I don't see how he can be able to escape the EFCC and be living in Abuja or in Lokoja. It, it will be difficult for him if EFCC really mean business to catch him. He's not like uh, Tompolo. I remember there was a time under President uh, Muhammad Buhari, at the early stage of Buhari, when Buhari was talking tough, and uh, this northern, uh, this uh, uh, Niger Delta militants were blowing up pipelines, which was one of the things that accelerated the first recession, reception, recession we had under uh, Buhari. Tompolo, who is now the darling of the APC administration, was declared wanted. But because Tompolo was basically operating from the Niger Delta. It was very difficult for them to have access to him. He was declared that there was in the papers. At the end of the day, after years of declaring Tompolo wanted, it was the same Tompolo that was eventually hired by the administration to help them to curb uh, pipeline uh, vandalization and uh, uh, stealing of the oil by militants and all that to guide the pipeline, to protect the pipeline. He was the person that eventually was recruited by the Buhari administration. So for, ye for years under Buhari, they declared Tompolo but because of the way Tompol operated, or the way he operates, and you hardly see him uh, in Abuja and all these uh, places, they couldn't reach him. 
those who declared him wanted couldn't have access to him until eventually he became their friend and uh, helped them to protect the uh, guide the pipeline and the rest is history but I don't see how uh, Yaya Belo will be staying in Abuja or staying in Lokoja and, EF and be able to avoid the EFCC for the next four years. Uh, it, it remains to be seen. Uh, it's a, this is a drama that I'm sure will eventually end up with Yaya Belo presenting himself to the EFCC. But at the end of the day, the question will be asked, what is the, then the essence of all this drama? When you know that you have the capacity to recruit some of the best lawyers in this country, you have the capacity to defend yourself, and uh, it is your man that is the governor of Kogi State, so you are literally well covered. So why all this drama? Because that's how this kind of drama, they will be pursuing Yaya Bello and uh, all that, and he'll be running, and before you know it, you hear that there was an accidental discharge, and one innocent Nigerian may be harmed. Okay, look at the kind of crowd that, were, that gathered where the EFCC was trying to have access to his home and all that. Anything could happen. There could be an accidental discharge. So all this drama is unnecessary. Those who are our leaders, who have been fortunate to be elected governors, presidents, or whatever, they should know that a day will come when they will be held accountable. They should be ready for that day. They should be able to defend themselves. It is not something that uh, should be cause any drama. It is something they should be ready for. It is, it is, in fact, this is an unnecessary drama that shouldn't have happened in the first, first place. Because Yaya Bello, as a public officer, ought to have known that he could be invited, he could be invited at any time by any organ of government or any agency of government to explain how he managed the resources of Kogi State. That's my take on this matter. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video because when you like it, Google will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you and yours.